Right learners, to finish up, I'm going to look at the accounting equation again. So we started off with the accounting equation, but we've now gone through various journals and posting to the ledgers, and I'm going to end up going back to that accounting equation, but I'm going to include in it which journals um, and the double entry we would have used. Now you will notice that if you're looking on the web, under resources, in grade 9 and grade 10, you will find I've got a summary of all the journals. And I've put a picture of a jigsaw puzzle here. This is extremely important because every entry is like one of these pieces. It fits in only one of these places. And so you need to go through and see and be able to identify which journal they each go into. So. For those who don't have the web, I'm actually just looking here now, please. I'll move it up for you. The cash receipts, the cash payments, the debtors, the debtors allowances, the creditors, and lastly, the creditors allowances journal. I've given you the document that is relevant, and I've given you some details to explain it. So please get a copy of this for yourself and get to know it. Right, so now I'm going to take you through an exercise with the accounting equation. As I said, it's going to say, well, which document recorded it? Because remember, documents are very important. They're the source of the whole transaction, and they're the proof that the transaction did take place. Which journal would you have recorded that into? Then when you post to the general ledger, and please take note, we're only looking at the general ledger here. So what account would you debit and what account would you credit? You will not have people's names here. Those appear in either the debtors or the creditors ledgers. The amount, and the most times it doesn't really change, but there are times that you'll have to be affected. And then the effect on the accounting equation. Is it an asset, is it an expense, or is it a drawings? Is it capital, income, or a liability? Right, so we started with, we provided a check to Telcom to pay the telephone account. So, we pro it's given you an example here. It's it was a check because we provide a check in the cash payments. Whenever it's in the cash payments, you credit the bank and you debit the expense. The amount was given to you. Now, your AOL is based on these two. And bank is an asset to you. So your bank is going down. Your asset's going down. Telephone is an expense and your expenses have increased. Right, the owner increased his capital by 10000 the business is receiving money. So you're either going to have a receipt that you give them, or it could be the bank statement. Goes into the cash receipts journal. Now the cash receipts journal means you're receiving money. So you will always debit bank. And therefore, your asset will go up. What is it for? It's for capital. And capital is obviously of the capital over here so your capital has now gone up as well and the amount given to you is 10,000 right then we received a fee income of 300 from a customer for repairing her furniture so we're receiving an income here so because we're receiving money it'll be probably a cash register tape or a cash register slip or cash slip in the cash receipts journal, now, as I said to you, whenever you receive money, your bank is going to increase. What are you getting it for? You're getting it for fee income. And your income, the amount of your income earned, has increased. And the amount there given to you was 300 Rand. Right. We received a loan from Uno Bank for 30000 Now you try and do that on your own. All right, now when you receive a loan, it'll either be bank statement or receipt. Again, you're receiving, so cash receipts journal. Your bank is debited, and that means your asset is increased. You're getting it for a loan. That means it's a liability, which is increased. Now the next one, you bought a second-hand delivery vehicle by check. So you're buying, so it's a check, and it'll be in your cash payments journal. Now as we said, cash payments will always credit your bank, and your bank will go down. But in this stage, you're buying a vehicle. 
Now vehicle is also an asset. So another asset will increase. Right, then on the sex you you bought trading stock on account. Now if you're buying on account, remember, now you're going to your creditors journal. Your document is an invoice. So now you can't have bank because you know you're not paying. You are buying trading stock. So trading stock is an asset to you. You increasing your asset. So when you increase an asset, you debit. You are crediting your creditor's control. Now, not a name of a person. It must be creditors because that's what's in the general ledger. Now, your creditors are your liability. And your liability is actually increasing at that stage with 15000 Right, now on the 7th, you return goods. So remember, if something was in the creditor's journal, you return it, it goes to the creditor's allowances journal. And you use a debit note. Now the reason why we debit note is because we're going to debit our creditor's control. The creditors are our liability. We're decreasing them. So when you decrease a, a liability, you debit. And so that means your liability is going down. What are you returning? You're returning trading stock. Now your trading stock was an asset. You're returning it, so your asset is going down. And you return for 400 Rand. Now I just want to stop here and I want you to look at this accounting equation. And this is the expanded equation here, like we did right at the beginning. There's an equal sign in the middle here. And because we know that we've got to have a double entry, and that our accounts have to be in balance. If you've increased on the left, you're going to increase on the right. If you're going to minus on the left, you're going to minus on the right. If, however, they are both on the left hand side, one will increase, one will decrease. Likewise, in this one, they were both on the left hand side, they're both in assets. Now that's something you can use to check yourself. Right, let's carry on now. Let's see if that applies. Now, on the 8th, we settled the account of Omega in full. Now, we're settling. We're paying. So, it's cash payments journal. Cash payments journal, either a check or it could have been an internet transfer. Cash payments, we're paying money. So, our bank, our asset is going down. What are we doing? We're paying our creditors. So, it's creditors control. Creditors are a liability. You're paying the liability, so your liability is going down. There again, minus on the left, minus on the right. I haven't filled up all the other squares, learners, but you can just put noughts into all of them. Right, now I want you to carry on with the rest of them up to um, the end of number 10. Well, let me just say, let's go and do number 9 and 10, and then I'll go through the sales with you. All right, so when you're buying on credit, the consumer stores is credit to journal with an invoice. You're buying consumable stores, which is an expense. Remember, consumer stores get used up. So your expenses are increasing. You're buying it on credit. So your credit is control. Your liability is increasing. And then the owner took for his personal use. So remember the business entity rule. The money's coming out of the payments, either check or an EFT, an internet transfer. He's taking money out of the bank, so your asset is going down. When the owner takes for his, business, his own use, you call it drawings. And his amount of his drawings is increasing. And can you see they're both on the left hand side, so there'll be a plus and a minus. Now on the 11th, you sold goods for cash. Now if you're selling for cash, obviously it's going to be in the cash receipts journal. And you'll have a cash register tape or a cash slip. You're receiving money, so your bank is increasing. So bank debits and your asset increases. What are you receiving that money for? You're receiving it for sales. And sales 
is an income to you. So you're going to have an income of 3,000 Rand. But remember now, with every sale, there has to be a cost of sales. Now, the cost of sales is still in the cash receipts journal. <coughs> but your double entry was cost of sales and trading stock. Remember, we've done this several times before. Now, trading stock is an asset. So your asset is going down. So while your money is going up, your trading stock is going down. Your sales was an income, so that's a gain for you. But cost of sales is an expense. Now, the total of your expense is actually increasing. And that's important here. We're looking at the total expenses here. My expenses are increasing. The fact that the cost of sales is on the left and the sales is on the right means they are cancelling each other. Right. On number 12, exactly the same, but you're selling on credit. So when you sell on credit, it's your debtor's journal. And there's an invoice. So you can't use bank now. You're going to have your debtor's control, which is an asset to you. So your assets going up. Why? For the sales amount of 5,000. And sales is an income, so your income is increasing. But again, with every selling price, there's got to be a cost price. So same entry, cost of sales and trading stock. But it'll be a lower amount, 3,100. Your trading stock is decreasing because you're selling. But the amount of your expenses is going to increase. Then on the 13th, now some of these goods that we've just sold here have been returned to us. So we know that if an entry is put in the DJ, it's got to go into the DAJ. And our document is a credit note. Now, our debtors control increased when we sold the goods there. So now we're going to decrease the debtors. They don't owe me this money. And so you're your asset is actually going down. Right, the double entry when we sold the goods was sales. So we want to minus it out of the sales. We want to cancel that income. But now remember, we opened up a separate account called debtors allowances. So we can keep track of our returns. Now, the debtors allowances is going to cancel some of the income. So uh, your income is actually going down. When you sold the goods, your sales, you got an income, now you're cancelling it. And again, you've got to cancel the cost price. So your trading stock has been returned to you. So your trading stock is going up and your cost of sales is going down because you're cancelling the cost of sales. You originally plused it and now you're minusing it. And then lastly, Nokwa paid the account, so we're receiving money, so cash receipts journal. We would have given her a receipt or it could have been a bank statement if it was an EFT. We're receiving money, so we've now done this a couple of times. Our bank is increasing. Why are we getting this? We're getting it from our debtors. So debtors control. And the debtor is also an asset, so your debtor is going down. So one asset's increasing, one asset's decreasing. There can only ever be two signs per line. And what you've got to concentrate on is getting the signs to actually balance out at the end of the time. Now just to take this one step further, we use the expanded accounting equation here, but sometimes you're gonna find assets equal owner's equity plus liabilities. Now remember that your owner's equity is made up of your capital, the money the owner puts in, 
the drawings, the money he takes out, plus the profit. Profit is income will increase the profit the owner gets and expenses will decrease it. So if they don't ask you for all of these columns, they ask you for owner's equity. The capital will still increase the owner's equity. But when there was a drawings over here, instead of having drawings as a plus here, we take it over and drawings will decrease the owner's equity. Your income is on the same side as capital, so all your income will increase the owner's equity. But your expenses, while the total of your expenses is going up, the effect on the owner's equity, the owner's investment in the business, will be a decrease. Now we'll look at that in another exercise. Now we've had a lot of accounting equations throughout and it is absolutely essential that you understand this because by the time you get to grade 12 and you're drawing up a lot of income separate and balance sheets, at the end of the day, it's based on this. Your income statement is your expenses and income. Your balance sheet is your accounting equation, asset equal owner's equity plus liabilities. Right, so please, I do encourage you to try and get to understand this. Not to learn it as a rule, but to really understand. Right, learners, good luck with this.